Well, hello, everyone. And thank you all for joining us for today's August Pilot Pass webinar, where we'll be putting a spotlight on our digitalized escape room experience, promptly titled the Capsum Inbox Escape Room. Now, my name is Matthew Shell. I'm Capsum's Market Development Manager, where I work with a variety of our authors on both the academic and on the corporate side to create these very micro simulation experiences. And in fact, I was a part, a little bit of part of the process here to create this escape room internally here at Capsum. Now, also, I'd like to introduce you to my colleague and Capsum's product manager for the Capsum Inbox platform, Monica Merzidlo, who had a hand in the creation of this as well. Monica, how are you doing today? Good, Matt. How are you? I'm doing excellent. I'm glad to see we got a good attendance here for today's webinar, where you got some really exciting sh uh, stuff to show you all today. Uh, but what I thought I'd start with before getting into a brief agenda would be what exactly is the Capsum Inbox Pilot Pass? So basically, for those of you that may not have been present for previous webinars throughout the year, the Pilot Pass initiative is something we started at the beginning of 2021, where we wanted to put a spotlight on each on, on specific versions of Capsum Inbox that we've released going back to 2019. And as a part of that initiative, what we'd like to do is provide free access to you all as professors and to as many students as you'd like to try these micro simulation based solutions to see if they're a good fit for your course. And typically, these are kind of a meet the author session where we bring on the author that wrote the simulation. We hear a little bit about why they decided to create the simulation, what were their key objectives, what are the key benefits for both professors and students alike. But for this one, since this one was made in-house, we're gonna take a little bit of a different approach. This month, we're gonna go much more in depth into the actual uh, student experience and actually take you through some of the sample puzzles that you'll go through in the escape room. Now, as far as an overarching agenda, what I'd like to do is start by providing a general overview of our Capsum Inbox micro simulations, because the inbox that we're going through today is a little bit of an atypical experience. And then from there, we're going to detail the escape room itself in, in very uh, fine detail, where I'll take you through the student experience by walking through the platform, everything from the onboarding to how they'll actually respond to emails. And then We'll go ahead and shift gears and have Monica talk a little bit about how you'd actually implement this in your course, why exactly it was created initially, and then take you through some of those sample puzzles. And then at any point throughout today's presentation, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to submit them into the chat, and we'd be happy to respond to those at the end of today's session. And now with that, we'll go ahead and jump right into what exactly is Capsum Inbox. So basically, Capsum Inbox is a simulation-based skill assessment platform where what we're really trying to do is put students in a day-in-the-life experience of a manager or an employee at a fictional company within, of course, a fictional industry. And basically, what we're trying to do is see how they would respond to different email and instant message stimuli if they were in that given role. And this includes everything from the day-to-day -day tasks they may encounter, problems, and perhaps even crises that they'll go through within a given day at that in that uh, role. Now, as far as the overarching experience, it's really boils down to three main sections. Uh, and all of this, of course, being web-based, self-directed, and individualized for your students to go through. The first component is what we call the experience overview. And basically, this is the onboarding process where we welcome the students to the fictional scenario, provide them with all the information necessary to set the scene, and then we also have a brief self-assessment where we can get some perceived skill or competency scores from the student that will then ultimately compare with the results in an inbox simulation. And I'll take you through that in just a second here. The second component is going to be the inbox simulation itself. And it's going to be, of course, a simulated email inbox that mirrors many of the outlooks and Gmails that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Makes it very familiar, very relatable for all students to really jump right in and instantly know how to navigate the simulation. And then the final component, which I'll share, share with you in just a second here, is going to be the outputs of the simulation. Uh, we, we, because what we do is we're able to provide instantaneous student results at the individual level on things like skill gaps and self-awareness levels. And we have an optional individual development plan on the majority of our inbox versions. That way, if your students want to create actionable goals to improve themselves after going through the inbox, they can go ahead and do that. And this also helps with our inboxes because very often they're used in a pre and post test setting. So that way you can kind of see what kind of effort the student put into their own professional development, into their own uh, advancement of knowledge, and then see how effective they were in that post test. So really quickly before we jump into the simulation, what does that report look like? Well, basically, 
you know, across the majority of our inboxes, you're going to get this standardized feedback report instantly on the student side, and then I'll show you what it looks like from the admin side as well. In this report, we show the student their overall performance by percentile, so actually measuring their skills or competencies against the general populace, the thousands or tens of thousands of students that have gone through that particular simulation. As far as a developmental index, this is basically a matrix that we provide that shows the student how proficient did you respond to the emails or instant message in that exercise, and how consistent were they through the experience. And then I mentioned a little bit of a self-assessment as well. Well, again, we actually compare that self-assessment to the simulation results. That way we can provide the individual with a self-awareness level gauge on a scale of zero to six, where higher scores would indicate that, of course, their perceived skills are close to reality, where lower scores can indicate that they're perhaps over or underestimating their current capabilities. So a bit of a reality check, if you will. And then finally, and perhaps most importantly with the feedback report, is that we actually visualize the skill gaps for students. So we actually plot out where did the inbox place them, where do they place themselves, so we can not only identify what are a student's key strengths, but also where are there the, where is there the most opportunity for improvement. And from the administrator side, in terms of viewing these types of results, we make it just as straightforward as it would be for the students to see it. So you'll of course have your course dashboard, where you'll be able to see overall scores and percentile averages for the general cohort. You'll be able to see averages for each of the skills being assessed within that given version of Inbox. And then down at the uh, bottom of the screen, you'll have your course roster, where you can look at individual results from everything from their overall score, when did they complete the simulation, how long did it take them to complete it, and if and when they completed an individual development plan, which you, of course, can view as the instructor and provide feedback on. And all in all, these are all common components across the majority of our Inbox versions. However, as we stated, the escape room a bit of a it takes a bit of a different approach. With this in mind, we really wanted to make it a fun and engaging experience that wasn't about the assessment component, but really boils down to what all escape rooms are looking at. How quick does it can you escape the room, basically? So now what I can do is provide you some top level information on the escape room experience, and then we'll go ahead and jump into a student account to show you how, you th how things work. So to start off, the Capsum Inbox Escape Room was created and released on November 15th, 2019. And in this experience, your team or individuals, if you'd like them to go through this, will take the role of a product launch team leader at a company called Escape Audio, a fun play on words that you'll see kind of continue through this experience with some of the different internal and external stakeholders that you'll be interacting with. And basically, Escape Audio is uh, a company that develops and sells different types of headphones, whether they be in-ear, over-ear, wired, wireless, you name it. And they've been an industry leader for quite some time. But they are seeing competition really starting to grow within their, within their segments. And what they're trying to do in this particular experience is debut a new product concept at an upcoming event. Now, in terms of the different topics that we hit on within this simulation, well, we're going to hit on key departments like research and development, marketing, production, finance, sales, and human resources. And for those of you out there that use some of our more group-based, project-based simulations, these are going to be very familiar to you because we wanted the escape room to, again, be a very fun exercise that could complement some of the other simulations that we have. But in regards to the overall scenario, again, we're looking at a web-based escape room experience with a business twist where you have one hour to navigate this simulated email environment and respond to different messages from your colleagues at Escape Audio. And as you're encountering these classic puzzles and trying to complete them to progress through the, the exercise, what you're really trying to do is figure out, can you design these, your set of headphones and send the product name to the CEO before the time expires? So with that, let's actually take a look at a student account at how they would encounter the Capsum Inbox Escape Room. Let me just increase the size of this a bit here. So I'll go ahead and log in with my demo kind of created for today. And the very first thing that your students or, or the teams or individuals will do is click that Capsum Inbox button. And what this will do is bring them to their student dashboard and they'll see when they'll be able to, to enter the simulation at a certain date and time, as well as when the experience will close. But they'll go ahead and click begin here. They'll answer a quick questionnaire. So let's respond to these very quickly. There we are. And then this kicks off the onboarding experience, which you can see the progress tracked here at the top of the screen. So 
on this self-assessment page, this is where you see in the more uh, standardized inboxes where you would self-assess on things like problem solving, communicative capabilities, leadership, and so on. But in this case, we just asked the students the question, we believe that our escape room will be faster than X amount of escape room participants, and we go ahead and ask them to gauge that. So let's say we're going to be about average. Go ahead and set that to 50. We'll go ahead and click Next. And the second part of the onboarding is going to describe to them what exactly Capsim Inbox is. So again, this day in the life simulation describes how to use the tool and a couple tips for success. They'll go ahead and click Next. And then this is where we define the scenario. So what is the actual situation you're gonna be in? What is your role? And in this case, for the escape room, this is where we also talk about team structures. Monica will cover this a bit later in today's presentation, but basically you can do this as individuals at a single device, teams where you're maybe shared screen and having one device, uh, one person going through an account, or you can have teams use multiple accounts on multiple devices. After this, we go and have a quick technical tutorial where we basically want to make sure that the student knows how to respond to the different emails functionally. And they can go ahead and complete that fairly quickly. And then the final thing here is the Start Inbox tab, basically the threshold before we jump into the micro simulation experience. Now, the, in, case the, in the case of the escape room here, what we do is we have an opening email from Escape Audio CEO Stereo, another plan words there, if you will. And I'll let Monica describe this a bit more as well to give you more context to the actual story. But basically what happens is, is once you click that start inbox button, you leave that onboarding and you jump into the timed experience. So we actually see that stereo email pop up here. But what I like to do is take a moment to kind of walk you through the technical aspects of the platform. So first and foremost, up here at the top, you'll of course see the timer that the students will have to complete the exercise. But no worries, if your students do not complete it within the 60 minutes time, it doesn't shut them out or anything. But we will, of course, track that progression, how long did it take them to actually complete it. But if you'd like to make it an exercise of who can complete it the fastest, or if you want it to be just completed within 60 minutes, you'll be able to assess those both ways. Now, in terms of the left side of the screen here, you'll, of course, see the inbox tab, which will show you any emails that have yet to be responded to. So let me just quickly respond to one here as an example. And then if I want to check my sent items folder, I can go back and look at my previous uh, responses. And then down here in the company drive, we do have the escape room participant workbook. Now this will be the primary way the students are able to solve the puzzles throughout the exercise. This is something that we have both hosted in the experience, but is also hosted within your administrative uh, resources within your platform. That way, if you'd like to provide the students prior, say they wanna print these off and be able to work with a pen and pencil, or if you'd like to upload this to a digital whiteboard, that way they can figure them out in real time there with a shared screen. So they have that option, but I'll go ahead and describe this a bit further towards the end of today's presentation. So what we're going through here now is just a couple of the first initial emails of experience. We have our new challenge from Stereo. He talks about how would you like to structure your team really quick, and Monica will cover that again. And then what happens now is we start to have different characters from the experience come in with the puzzles themselves. So we have a quick email from Manny Sellers, our sales director, talking about the UPC code's been scrambled. We'll allude to this a little bit later, but basically as they complete the puzzles, they're gonna get different pieces or clues to the product name upon completion. That way they add them all together at the end to submit the name to the CEO. So thanks, Manny. And then as you'll see here, we'll start to have emails populate from all of the key departments that I described a bit earlier. To start with, we have our R&D director, Design. We have AutoTune, our production director. And then also Penelope P. Romo, our marketing director. And I think we should be expecting one more email in here in just a second, but we'll give her a chance to respond. But as you can see within the different emails, as they encounter these puzzles, they'll of course have a uh, attachment that'll show them the direct puzzle within their participant workbook. We also provide them the exact page to refer to, and we break the fourth wall just a little bit here where we give them specific instructions as to how to complete that puzzle. Now, as you can see down here at the bottom, we do have a variety of multiple choices. In this case, we're working with design to figure out what kind of product features do we want in our headphones. So let's go ahead and just say uh, durability, wireless, high tech without looking at the puzzle and see what happens. Well, you'll see that we instantly get a response from design that says, huh, this may be too costly, or in other words, not the correct response. So of course, we do give the students the chance to submit the, the correct response again. We have a little bit of looping logic here. 
where they then get the same email back from design, the incorrect response has been omitted, and then they can make their next selection. Now, some of you out there are probably wondering, well, if you can just cycle through the answers, what stops a student from responding to them very quickly to try to get through the experience as fast as they can? Well, we did think of that, actually. For every single time that a student uh, or a team selects an incorrect response, we actually deduct 30 seconds from the clock there at the top. And I could demonstrate that real quick here. You'll see a quick flash, takes the time away, we get that corrective email again, and then they can come back and make another response. And as you can see with the number of responses, it's very easy for a student to lose every bit of two or three minutes if they were just to cycle through like that. But basically, this is how they'll interact with the different puzzles, how they'll submit their responses, and then move forward through the simulation. Now what I'd like to do is go ahead and hop back to our deck here and describe to you a little bit about how you actually escape. How do you win that simulation? So in total, student teams are going to be looking to complete roughly eight puzzles within set hour. And again, after completing each of the puzzles, they're going to acquire, acquire a couple of clues from the sales director that they'll eventually have to uh, descramble to find the name of the product. And once you submit the product name to the CEO, you will, of course, escape the experience. It'll actually tell them you've concluded the experience and their time will be processed. Now, the students will see that time upon exiting. And then you as a professor will be able to review these results via your professor dashboard. And again, if you'd like to make it so it's just the fastest team to go through it efficiently, you can do it that way. Or if you really want to say, you got to do it within 60 minutes, totally up to you. Now, as far as the puzzle types that they'll encounter within the inbox experience, we're looking at you know, classic puzzles like word searches, Sudoku, process of elimination style puzzles, sequential movement puzzles, and even a fun handwriting analysis that we'll show you here in just a moment. And to dive a bit further into the actual concepts that we cover, cover within the sim, we do of course make it that business twist escape room, but we still wanna attach it to some real you know, business concepts. So a lot of these puzzles are relating to things like determining market research, like the design puzzle we figured out. That's all about trying to figure out which are the most, uh, the, what, what features are most in demand by your clients. We also have puzzles that, that feature uh, aspects of pricing, sales forecasts, productivity generally, setting automation levels, raising capital, and even some ethical decision-making uh, decisions towards the end of the experience. But now that I provided you know, a lot of information about the student experience itself, how you exactly win or escape the room, I'd like to now pass it over to my colleague, uh, Monica Merzidlo, who will take you through why did we exactly create this Capsule Inbox escape room, what are some key objectives, how teams can be structured, and then finally, showcase some of our puzzles. Monica? Thank you, Matt. Uh, so we're gonna dive into why the escape room was originally created. So DePaul University reached out to our team in the summer of 2019 and asked if we could create a fun icebreaker for their students going through the MBA orientation. Capstone had actually been working on a physical escape room, so we decided to try and digitize that experience. And that's how the Capstone Inbox escape room was born. While this was meant to be a fun activity to encourage students to work together and collaborate, Capstone still wanted to provide a business twist by including common departments that are part of running a business. Students will work through making decisions around pricing of their products to determining how the production of the product will actually be funded. However, no previous business knowledge is required here, making this a great introduction activity as well. The overall obje objective with the escape room is to have fun while also learning to work together in teams. Now, as with any version of Caps Inbox, we want to set the scene providing the student with information on their new role. So here they will be a product launch team member. Stereo, CEO of the Escape Audio Company, has just attended an annual conference and was made aware that a lot of competitors will be releasing new products at a future upcoming conference, and everyone seems to be buzzing about it. So your goal as team lead is to submit a proposal for some new headphones in just about 60 minutes. You and your team will be in charge of designing the new headphones, pricing, manufacturing, and financing this project. Now the escape room can be completed in a variety of ways. While this was originally intended as an activity for a group of students, this can also be completed individually. For an individual experience, each student will create their own account and work through the escape room on their own, solving puzzles and answering emails. The ideal setup would, would be for teams, 
would be a group of students working together in person using only one computer or device. As the emails arrive, teams will work together to solve these puzzles with the information provided, capturing the completion time on one device. Now, it's not always possible for all team members to be in the same location, so there is also an option for teams to work remotely. Still using one device to actually access the inbox assessment while screen sharing with the team. The participants not actively making decisions in Inbox can be working off the participant workbook that holds all of the puzzles. In a group setting, each team member will use their own device, could use, also use their own device to access the escape room. One person of the team would be selected as team leader, while all others would be team members. Now, the team leader will be the primary person entering in all the decisions being made, and that's where the ultimate time will be captured. Each person can still work through the puzzles on their own, but ultimately all answers must be provided to the team leader. The final completion time would then be recorded based on that and provided on the professor dashboard. With this format, having a screen sharing like Zoom or Google Meets would be ideal so that the team can communicate in real time and still work together. Now we've been mentioning these puzzles throughout this presentation, so you might be curious to know where did these puzzles actually come from? When Capsum was creating the escape room, we took a collaborative approach. The entire company was invited to join brainstorming sessions where we workshopped different puzzles for each business department and even came up with many of the character names like CEO Stereo or the head of finance Penny Bond. Now this puzzle you see on your screen is a product of one of those brainstorming sessions. We wanted to provide a variety of puzzles at different levels of difficulty as well. So the capacity puzzle, I would probably say is a mildly difficult math problem. Students are tasked with determining how many machines and laborers are needed to generate 15,000 units a day in the most economical manner. Information is provided regarding how many hours a day each laborer can work, how many units laborers and machines can produce, and the costs associated with each. The email from the head of production provides four different combinations of laborers and machines. So the best way to solve this puzzle would be to have students calculate the costs and the amounts of units produced with each combination, finding the solution that would produce at least 15,000 units and is the most cost effective. Now this next puzzle was a very fun, fun one for us to create. In addition to every aspect of running a business, we also wanted to show the human side of running a business and introduce the scandal as well. The story here is that your product team was in a meeting brainstorming ideas for the new headphones being launched at the upcoming conference. Many ideas and features for the product were discussed, as well as a drawing of how the headphones would work. Someone on your team decided to copy the headphone design onto a napkin during that meeting, and the design was unfortunately leaked. So your job is to determine who might have leaked this design by comparing the handwriting on that napkin to the handwriting on the whiteboard from your brainstorming session. You'll be choosing from suspects like Robin Banks, Paul Heist and Tom Swindle to name a few. Now we wanted to make sure that all students were able to set, attempt solving these puzzles, whether they had a device with them or not. So we wanted to provide that information. We've created puzzle workbooks that will be a big part of the escape room experience. So I'll hand it back to Matt now, who will be able to go over those. Absolutely. Thank you very much for that description, Monica. And that's just a quick uh, preview of some of the different uh, escape room puzzles that you'll encounter during the experience. Uh, as Monica mentioned now, what I'd like to do is kind of take you through some of the resources that we created to not only provide the student with the proper context to go through some of these puzzles, but for you as a professor to understand how they're actually solved and how you can relate them to key concepts that may be covered within your course. So the very first thing that we created and what I alluded to a bit earlier is that participant puzzle workbook. Now, this is going to be available directly within the company drive when they enter the experience, should they like to pull it up at that time. Or again, you'll have access to this document that you can provide to them, which we would recommend maybe just prior to them going through it. That way they can work these out and maybe print it off if they'd like. It of course will give them uh, instructions on how to use this packet and how it interacts directly with the puzzles. And it'll actually take them through the visuals that they can then link directly to the emails that they're seeing. And again, it's not as if they can just take the workbook as it is, they're gonna need to look at directly at the emails to have the proper context to figure out what are they exactly trying to solve here? Now, from the administrator side, we went ahead and of course made an admin puzzle workbook as well. This is gonna be uh, visible via your admitted administrative resources tab on your course page through your professor account. And as you can see, we actually show you how to solve each of these puzzles. 
I didn't want to spoil anything for any of you today here, so I did, of course, omit those. But you can kind of see how we give that information to the instructor, should you like to have a little post-simulation debrief, if you would. But speaking of debrief, you know, while this is a fun and engaging exercise, and while it's not directly assessing anything outside of completion time, we do understand that a lot of the concepts that are going to be encountered here are going to be relative to different types of courses. So what we were able to do is we created a concept debrief guide, also available within your administrative resources tab within your course page. And basically what we do here is that we take you through all the different puzzles. We tell you what department it was related to, what type of puzzle it was, what key concept was it related to. That way you can kind of uh, incorporate some teaching moments into this. So for instance, when we're talking about, you know, trying to find, you know, determine what product specifications are, are the ones we should go with, well, why is market research important? Or say, for instance, why is it important to create a sales forecast and being accurate in that prediction, for example? And all in all, this has been able to add a lot of value to a lot of instructors that have used this. And in fact, it's one of our most popular versions of Inbox to date. In fact, I'm happy to say that over the last year, we've had roughly 3,500 students go through this particular simulation alone and we've been getting some great feedback from them along the way in terms of it being very fun, as well as something different that they haven't seen before and very much on par with a lot of the more physical escape rooms at the time. But while we get a lot of great feedback internally, I'm happy to say that not just the escape room, but Inbox generally has gotten a lot of recognition from some outside institutions as well. In fact, I'm happy to say that over the past 15 months or so, we've been recognized by both the Brandon Hall Group and the EdTech Awards for the Capsum Inbox platform. On the EdTech side, uh, we've seen that we were selected as a trendsetter for the product or service setting a trend for workforce last year, along with being selected as the Cool Tool Award winner for the best professional skill solution. And then as far as this year goes, we were able to get that Cool Tool Award again, but this time around for corporate training solution, an area of growth that we see a lot with our inbox platform. And then as far as the Brandon Hall Group Awards go, we were able to uh, find out in December that we got two gold medals, one for the best advanced in gaming or simulation technology, and then also for the very authoring platform that we at Capsum used to create the solution and the same platform that many of our authors out there use to create their own custom micro simulation experiences for the best advanced in content authoring technology. And if any of you out there would ever like to work with us to create your own simulation via the simulated email platform, just let us know and we'll be happy to talk with you. But as we come to a close on today's presentation, I'd like to provide a, a couple of, of final resources and then we can open up to a quick chat. So if you do have any questions, feel free to submit those in the chat now. We'll get to that in just a second. So if you'd like to contact either Monica or myself to learn a little bit more about the simulation directly from us, I've gone ahead and put our emails up there on screen. However, we'll of course provide to you both the presentation deck that we went through today and the recording of today's session uh, very quickly here within the next 24 hours. And as you see here, I do have a hyperlink on this final slide page that'll uh, allow you to instantly register to create your very own demo account that we can go through the experience yourself. However, if you'd like to connect with us directly at Capsum, you'll have the opportunity to talk directly with one of our solution specialists who will give you a one-on-one -on -one walkthrough of the, of the solution, talk about how you can directly implement it in your course and get you set up with a pilot. That way you can test it out with your students. And then if you'd like to ever see what's on the horizon for our next upcoming Capsum Inbox sessions, which will have a return to our more standardized versions that do provide assessment and kind of measurement of both the you know, key skills and competencies related to a given version, we're gonna have a couple new versions we're highlighting here in the latter half of the year. So stay tuned for those as well. And with that, we'll be happy to take any questions at this time from the crowd. Let's see here. Let's see uh, one question in the questions tab here. Um, how? Let's see here. Uh, how many types of puzzles? We have a, we have a question from the audience. So basically, again, there's going to be roughly eight puzzles within this experience, and the way that we have it currently structured is that we have two for uh, R and D, two for marketing, two for production, a kind of uh, it's kind of a split puzzle, depending on if you click, click short-term or long-term debt for the finance department. And then we have the ethical handwriting scenario at the end. So a total of eight there. And I would say that you could consider it a ninth one where you're having to descramble the clues from all the puzzles combined to find out the name of your solution, of your new headphone product. Uh, let's see here. 
Uh, we have a question on pricing. What is this typically priced at? Um, happy to say this is going to be priced at $10 per student to go through the simulation uh, for, for each student. Uh, we can also do team pricing for that as well. Quick chat here. Any final questions we'd like to answer at this time? Just a few more moments here. Excellent. Well, we appreciate all of your time today for today's demonstration of the Caps and Minbox Escape Room. We hope that it is, it, you all find it to be the fun and engaging experience that we designed it to be. And if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to let us know at any time. But thank you all again for your time and have a great day.